Yearly, 100,000 persons are affected by glaucoma, a major cause of blindness in the world. Today on Sound Health, we will find out how to prevent and manage glaucoma. I'm Ola Sumbo Modupe. Welcome to the show. This year is focus on glaucoma. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to make sure everybody gets to know about these diseases. I say diseases because glaucoma is not just glaucoma. There are different types, different variants mm -hmm. and all of that. What is most common in our part of the world is the primary open angle glaucoma, which usually doesn't give any signs at the beginning. Usually, you are just on your way to work, you now realize that, oh, I almost walked into someone, or a car almost hit me and I had not seen it. And then you start asking questions, that's what now makes you go see an eye, clinic, an eye doctor. And then that's when you now realize that vision is almost gone, you know? So it usually presents with no signs. And then it progresses gradually over a long period of time which means that it's only at its end stages that you would actually know that you're having issues with your sight. Okay. okay, so what we're trying to do is to bring the message to the general public, telling you about glaucoma, asking you to go get tested, whether you have it or not, knowing that if you have it, there's a greater risk of someone else in your family having it, mm -hmm. okay? Because the fact that you are black, black-skinned, is one of the risk factors. They would say age is also one of the risk factors from 40 years and above, but these days we're beginning to see glaucoma present even in young children. So it's really not about age anymore, even though it's one of the risk factors, but let's not look at age alone. Then the fact that you wear glasses could also be one of the risk factors. People who are short-sighted are at a higher risk of developing glaucoma than people who do not, okay? So we want to educate as many people as possible because really, it's the fact that you don't know, the things you don't know these days are what kills you, not what you know. <laughs> okay, so we're taking it out there, even to the rural areas. Thanks for staying with us. It's still Sound Health on Lagos Television. And today we are looking at glaucoma. And I have with me an ophthalmologist, Dr. Ola Yemi Olorundari. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you very much. It's um, good to be on this program. Okay, doctor, according to the World Health Organization, glaucoma is one of the causes of blindness in the world. Um, what is glaucoma and what causes this condition? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, glaucoma, in uh, very simple terms, can be described as a group of diseases um, in which there's damage to the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the nerve that is responsible for vision. Uh, it's just like you not paying your nepa bills and you come to disconnect the cable. So the <coughs> optic nerve connects the eyeball to the brain. So what happens in glaucoma is that the nerve gets damaged progressively over time. Mm -hmm. And um, you can just imagine that um, there are a number of smaller nerves that come together to make up the optic nerve. So with continuous damage, each, you know, each now, I mean, takes care of vision to an extent. And once that one, that nerve is damaged, the aspect of vision it takes care of is gone. So over time, as the nerve gets destroyed, vision also is lost progressively. What are the risk factors and um, does this condition affect only older persons in the society? Glaucoma typically affects um, adults. That's looking at people 40 years and above. But having said that, it can actually, it can actually cut across every age group. We've seen babies uh, who, who have glaucoma. We've seen teenagers who have glaucoma, young adults, elderly. So it can affect any age group um, at all. Uh, talking about the, the risk factors, which is very important here, because for the common type of glaucoma, there's really no, no single cause because we call it primary glaucoma. So some of these factors will include that which I've mentioned uh, before. Um, advancing age is, is a risk factor. Then um, people, the, the family history also, heredity 
is also um, you know, a strong um, risk factor. Other risk factors will include um, people of um, African descent, that's um, the black race. Um, also, um, there's a type of refractive error, that's an error in seeing that we call um, myopia, which generally people call short-sightedness. So that also is a risk factor um, for glaucoma. Other things that um, usually is what we determine in the hospital will include things like people constantly have pressures that are above 21 millimeters of mercury, which... Can you make that same to Okay, um, to okay. The, 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 normal, the normal pressure in the eye, normally in the eye, there's an amount of pressure that is needed to keep the eye healthy, to keep the eye healthy, and that is between 10 and 21. The unit is millimeters of mercury. Um, when it's above that, we call it elevated pressure in the eye. Mm -hmm. So if there's if constantly, when the person, for instance, comes for an eye check, and it's always at that level, above 21, that also is a risk factor for glaucoma. Other lifestyle um, habits like um, smoking alcohol are also been known to contribute as risk factors too. Okay, aside from smoking, um, could the use of computers, regular uh, watching of TV, increase the chances of glaucoma? Uh, the, the use of computers, TV, I know in the present, now own present time, there's a lot of, I would even say, abuse of that. People spend long hours you know, in front of their monitor. Um, some because of work demands, yes, but again, you leave work, you're on your tab, you're on your phone. Um, that in itself would not contribute to glaucoma or would not lead to glaucoma. But again, just to add that, um, one needs to be cautious about that because it can lead to additional strain on the eyes, yes. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, we hardly visit uh, the hospital. Um, how do you prevent this condition? Is the condition preventable? How do you prevent glaucoma? Um, glaucoma is a, as a disease of the eye. It cannot be prevented. Okay. But the blindness that comes from glaucoma can be prevented. And the, the key way of trying to achieve that, that's preventing the blindness, is by early detection. And the only way one can detect glaucoma early is by regular eye check. So even though it's not a, you know, it's not popular amongst us to go for eye check, it's still um, one thing that we keep emphasizing over and over again. It has to become something that, um, that everybody becomes used to. We need to get our eyes checked. That's the only way to detect and to begin to treat if um, glaucoma is detected in the eye. All right, Dr. Olon Rodari, um, is this condition treatable and is it accessible, is treatment accessible in Nigeria? Oh yes, glaucoma is treatable and um, in terms of uh, accessibility, I would say yes because um, of the importance of um, that, that we attribute to that um, disease condition. It's the leading cause of blindness all over the world and so every ophthalmologist is particularly interested I mean, it's in, in the management of glaucoma. So indeed, it's as accessible. Um, you, you can, you can, you can it, at the level of the private, um, um, private clinics, hospitals, the government hospitals, yes, you can access care okay. and easily enough. The World Health Organization aims to eliminate avoidable blindness by the year 2020 with a project called the Right to Sight. Um, what do you think the government, healthcare providers, and p uh, persons, people in the society generally can do to um, achieve this deadline? Um, well, I, I would say that um, it's work in progress. <laughs> yes, the setting deadlines is good, uh, but um, what is more important is um, just just as, uh, like you said, the the concerted effort that is required. Um, government, the government has a role to play. Um, the practitioners, the health, the eye practitioners um, have a role to play. The public have a role to play. Um, government, in terms of um, um, making, you know, the working environment, you know, conducive enough in terms of providing facilities that um, 
one can one can use in um, detecting and monitoring this disease, mm -hmm. and uh, and also um, well, if, if, even if, if with regards to the to treatment also. Um, some of the drugs indeed and the procedures we need to treat, they are still quite expensive. So even at that level, policies can be put in place to ensure that um, in terms of treatment, it's made more affordable for the people. Of course, creating um, public enlightenment as we are doing now from the healthcare um, practitioners is also very important. Then the general population should avail, them, avail themselves of the opportunity. We can't overemphasize the, the need to, to have was eyes checked regularly. According, According to, to Global Research, Research Foundation, Foundation approximately 10% of persons that are of glaucoma um, um, still, still experience um, loss, loss of vision, vision after proper, proper treatment. treatment. What, could what could be the, be the cause of this? this? And could, and could there be a relapse? relapse? One major issue we have in this part of the world is late presentation. <clears throat> and it's known that when people present late, it's found that the how much of um, management one can give in terms of stopping the progression mm -hmm. of that of the of glaucoma itself becomes a bit reduced. So again, when people present late, they will fall into that category of people who, who still continue to experience vision loss mm -hmm. despite the fact that you are treating. So again, early presentation will go we go a long way in um, having people that you are treating. You know. Your management appears to be going on well to an extent, but yet the vision keeps on dropping. So early presentation is um, is quite important. The treatment for glaucoma is lifelong, so we don't usually talk of um, relapse when we are treating glaucoma. So um, then that's what we impress on the minds of the patients when when they come that this treatment is lifelong. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Olaye Miolonundari, for sharing your expertise with us on preventing and managing glaucoma. Thanks for having me. Okay, that has been Dr. Olaye Miolonundari, an ophthalmologist on managing glaucoma. Sound health continues with trending and home essentials. Please stay with us. The program continues shortly. <laughs>
This is where we say thank you on today's edition of Sound Health. Remember, regular visits to an ophthalmologist will prevent loss of vision. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 0818 815 3695 or follow us on social media at LTV Social hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice.